G'day, this is Matthew from Cat Pro Systems. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, Camduct and trying to get it to, to write out code for machines that uh, there aren't custom or there aren't post processes for existing. Uh, this particular case uh, it was a, a fibre laser, very nice piece of machinery. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't find a post processor on the website, on Autodesk website, which is this one here. Um, to do it. It looked like there was one here, Primo Post Processor, but that was for an older version of the machine. Um, and this particular uh, Platino Fiber laser is more like the FinPower uh, format. So anyway, let's just uh, move on. So you can have a look at what these machines are like. Uh, nice little YouTube video. Um, got some sample code. That looked uh, after I brought it into Excel looks a bit like this. Um, so right at the head of the of the of the code, uh, I've gone through and actually just taken the text file and turned it into uh, this Excel file with some meaning next to each of the line items. And there's some here that you'd look at and go, "What the hell is this?" Um, and again, these lines, this line here, what's this all about? Um, haven't seen it in, in other types of processes. Uh, that's might be my lack of exposure to the other sorts of machines, but uh, that'll like this one. Anyway, we had to get there. And so inside Camduck itself, uh, you've got a lot of choices. Um, and fortunately, you have custom process processes now. So if you have a look at what I've done with this particular process processor, uh, first up, we'll have a look at the setup. <coughs> and um, we go through here, I've changed the output to be txt, just so that I can take the txt, uh, run a script on it, and turn it into something else. Um, could have left it with the, with the final output file, but I didn't. Um, that's the way I chose to do it. So these settings won't matter too much. Um, the web cutting, I haven't got it set up. Duckboard's not set up for it. Auto marking, they wanted to see the item and the index number on the, on the marking. Uh, so the laser will do the marking for them. Um, special features, we've set it up to relative arc centers and to allow full circles. Um, you'll be careful with these. you just got to make sure the machine will actually do what you expect it to. Um, and the remarks. Now, this is fortunate that we can output um, from Camduct the remarks at the top of the sheet. Um, and these allow us to do what we need to do later on. So all of these things here are just standard. Um, and when you concatenate them, that'll just actually stick them together like concatenating in Excel, but um, it wasn't sufficient uh, and the formatting's not quite right uh, for what we needed. So to have a look at some of the sample code, um, I'll just have a look. Uh, so this is what some of their standard code looks like. You can see this has come out of NC Express, that version um, for the Platino. It's that nest number, and we can slowly go through and work it all out, as I showed you with the spreadsheet. So to make Camduct make that file, so that first step was to make sure the setup is correct, and we're collecting the remarks at the top of the um, at the top of the output. So we actually have to look at the um, the tool the tooling setup, and I've actually copied um, uh, the Air Plasma, probably the D6 post process, and I can't remember to be exact, but I needed to find one that had both cutting and marking in it, so I could get it working. So that's what I did. If we just have a look at um, the code itself. In this top section here, have a look in the help file. It does tell you what, how this works, but it's, um, this might help you a little bit more. So we go down to the program start to make sure we end up with the G08 that it needs. Um, we, we make sure that the G08 is at the beginning. So you make a G8, it's minimum length of two, it's got leading zeros. So it'll make a G08, then it'll, the next line will be G92, G71. Work type one, material location. Now, I did this so that I could find exactly where in the code I needed to put all the material description like this. Needed that description. 
And then later on, I need this one here. So if we go back into this dialog box, you'll see that's material location. So I'm happy with my G90, uh, the Univa location, which I've just mentioned. I'm going to turn the laser on. That gets all the gas and everything going. Uh, clean the tip and run the seam through P. So what happens? Um, let's just have a look at what how we actually run this. I've got this set up as a process. So I'm uh, the nesting options, and these are fixed for this uh, particular process. So if you want to change them, it's fine. Just change them here. Um, and if you change them when you're outside of this process, then they'll be different. So this is unique to the way that this process is set up. So you need to make sure they're correct. Um, machine, I've always selected the Prima laser. That's what I've called this one. And always use this machine. Um, and then I'm running the script that I run. So we hit the process, it runs through, creates the uh, output files, and if we have a look at, uh, what was that one called? 1424, 1425, 1424, and 1425. So here we go, we've got that all in the right order. <clears throat> right, so if we go back to, I'll just, let me see. So we can look what that post processor looks like and uh, set up. Go back into the tools, go to the laser on plasma, and um, we can see now there's a text file output. We can see what I was talking about with this. It's got the location. This is what that actual file that not ready for the machine yet because it actually needs to have. Um, that format. So the next trip that I've got to go through, so I just wanted to show you that and how they, uh, how it's output, and make sure you've got a uh, open brackets, asterisks um, for comments. So if you have a look somewhere in here, there's a program comment, remarks are called, remarks, so open bracket asterisks. <clears throat> so if the machine just needed a uh, uh, parentheses or, or something else it needed a some other character then you that's where you do it um, so now to have a look at the script which is a, the next step of the process we open the script that, uh, that we wrote and oops, I'll just bring that onto screen so you can see it <clears throat> So all the stuff up here is just comments, um, just to tell you what it's, what the file is actually doing or what the post process is doing. Um, we've got a function set up. Um, we're going to find and set the variables. So we're de uh, defining a lot of a few variables here, and uh, the P1, P2, and P3 used in the program at different times for setting the height of the um, the head away from the surface of the material. So um, all the stuff that's above this is okay to change, and all the stuff after this is no good to change. So basically what it's doing, it opens the file. It's looking through for where I had that uh, asterisk material. Um, it's testing to make sure you know, what it's called and inside Camduct. The material's called galvanized, and then it's actually called galv in the controller, so I have to rename it. Um, and then... Or we do the same type of thing with gauge and we find what the gauge is and the text and we build up the string. So we end up with a complete string here in the right format. So then there's a, the any, uh, that any uh, variable needs to be set as well. So we do the same thing with that. Um, it's a bit more complicated, but it's all in there. <clears throat> And um, then we just go through and fix uh, uh, the output file and rewrite the text file or replace the text file with a .iso file that has all these updated corrections in it. And um, that's it for showing you how the thing works. Um, 
just know that this type of thing can be done, that if you can't get the output you want from Camduck from standard post processes, you can run a script at the end to actually manipulate that code. Uh, be very, very careful doing it. It needs to be uh, uh, done with a, somebody who's very careful about running the machine so we don't drive the, the head into the material um, or try and drive it through the base or we have the wrong height offsets or any of those sorts of things. Um, so take a lot of care with it. The uh, when you get this machine running fast, you know, cutting it 30 meters a minute or whatever it cuts at, um, it's pretty impressive to watch and it's pretty quick. Um, so, without any further ado, I shall leave it there. Um, if you need any further explanation on how this process works, feel free to make some comments below and I will uh, attempt to. Um, get in touch um, so yeah I might end up doing a video about how to create a post processor from scratch but um, it's a bit time consuming so uh, we'll see what sort of demand there is thank you